Hi guys, this is Vishal here from Rapcode. So in this video, we will understand how to implement the edit and update flow in Xeno using uh, like in Rapcode using Xeno. So here we are basically building a platform or a full application on Xeno where we are fetching the data, we are creating new records, applying pagination, downloading data. So here we will see how to basically update the records. So we have a project where we have integrated Xeno where we are fetching data through REST API. We are not persistent anything. We are storing uh, using draft code as a 100% front-end builder. Okay, so all this data is coming from Xeno and we have implemented an API to create new records. So if I go and create a new person, it will immediately get reflected in Xeno. We have also implemented a view details page where we fetch the data of an individual record or an individual uh, database item. And then uh, we'll display it here. So this is there. Now we want to basically update something. To update something, uh, we have this uh, person object. We want to update the person record. To update the person record, we have an API, which is basically this edit person record. So here we will be creating an external API. We'll be creating a form. We will show the data prefilled on that form and then update the form and send the data to Xeno so that it gets updated. Let's see how this can be done in draft code. Okay, so we already have a page to create new person. Let's try creating new person, person seven. Some date of birth and then gender. Let's see mail and I submit it. As soon as I submit it, it will just make a call, send the data to Xeno and go to the list page and fetch the data, the latest list of person from Xeno. Okay, so here, uh, let's go to Xeno. Let, let it complete the action. So here we have created a person seven and it has submitted the form and it directed us to the list page and all this list is also coming from Xeno. So let's go to Xeno and see what happens here. So I just reload the table. Here you can see the person seven got created and these are the four fields which we just sent person date of birth gen gender and email address so let's see how we can edit these records right so to edit it we need to call this particular api which is person edit record if you want to see the structure that how this api looks like so we can go to the swagger documentation which is here and let's see that api which is edit person record so here we need to send the id of that person in the url as a path parameter and then the the four parameters right so if you want to update a particular thing you can just uh, send the new values with the specific key and it will update the record okay so let's go and build the form in trap code so i'll come here we have this list page so let's implement this edit functionality so i what i'll do i'll go and create a person edit page so i'll go and say create page let's say person edit person edit i'll say copy from existing page and just copy from person create page we'll change the settings later okay so the page is created okay so i'll just delete this form okay and let's drop a new form collection form so there are not much change so we should have used the same form or so the main thing is event we need to create a new event so now we have to show the data prefilled that is one thing and we'll have to update the record right so let's see how this can be done so to show the data prefilled we need to we need all the details of the person so there can be a scenario when you can just pass the data from the list page or you can make a fresh call to get the latest data. So in this case, we'll making a fresh call. We'll make a call to uh, Xeno API to fetch the details. So there's an API, uh, this. So for the person, there's an API to get person record. So this will fetch the data. We will use the data to show the form prefill. Once the form is prefilled, we'll just submit the data to update the record. Okay, so we already have an API to fetch the data, which we have created to use the, to basically uh, show the details page, but we can just create one more API. It is very similar and then just use it. So let's see how that can be done. So I'll go to external APIs and let's create two APIs. One API will use to pull the data. Okay, and other API will, will use to push the data. So I'll say create external API. I'll say pull, 
percent data for edit okay and this is a get call let's go to api documentation it is saying person id to get person record i'll just copy the endpoint you can also mark it as authenticated unauthenticated you need to pass the access token in the url which you already covered in other videos so we'll just skip it here okay i'll say url get call now the person id so this is the id which we need to pass uh, dynamically so i'll just wrap it in a, a double curly basis because this is how you wrap variables okay and i'll need to pass the value so i'll say person id will come from non persisted collection why it is so because when you are not persisting data so we have a list of person from that person we have the id of all the person we have the data of all the person and we are saying instead of fetching the data from the database collection just use that particular list so we we'll, we already have that particular list of person here so i am saying on click of this edit button pass the id which will further make a call to zeno it will get the data of the person and then we'll use the data to show the form as prefield this particular setting will just fetch the data or make a get call dynamic id which is coming from the in the list page in the variable id because this is how we have mapped the list page which you can see in the video when we have displayed the data in the list page in the form of table okay so i'll say person id pass the dynamic id now when the response comes you don't have to store in database we'll use this setting that you just map it to a collection without persisting so this will basically bind the fields or bind the data which is coming from zeno in the drive code collection just to make it uh, basically just make it understand so that the collection form can understand it you can also use it through json path and all those thing but that is much more complex this is much easier where you automatically bind the response which is coming from a rest api to a mongodb collection of trap code okay not mongodb collection which is it's a, it's a collection uh, uh, it's a in memory collection okay so i'll say person since the data is coming on the root itself we don't need to give any path okay otherwise let's if data is coming under data dot item or something then you have to give that part like this data dot item okay here it is coming at direct at the root level so you don't need to give anything now these are the columns which is coming so let's see what is the structure of uh, the data so this is how the data comes so let's say if i say percent 2 so this is the api so this is the data which comes so i'll say bind id to id which is fine full name to full name email to email address date of birth to date of birth and gender to gender so this is basically we are saying fetch the data and wrap it in this particular structure and i'll say save setting we will use this setting to show the form prefilled okay show the edit form prefilled so let's see how we can do it so i'll go to my page okay and let's do the setting to show the data prefilled and we'll also bind the list page to basically map to a edit page so that when you click the edit button it shows it takes you to the edit page and show the form prefilled so this is my edit page so i'll go to the settings in the advanced setting i'll say get data from person the default is from the collection we are saying don't bring from collection but bring from the external api which external api the one which we just created which is pull person data for edit okay and that's all we are saying make the api call fetch the data whatever the data is coming wrap it in the person collection and display this particular form as prefilled so i'll say update since you want to display the data prefilled so you will need to redo the form okay otherwise you have you can also go and manually bind each field one by one that okay for this particular field get data from that so it's much much easier uh, just redo the form so now the data is coming from uh, that rest api now let's go and link this page to person list page so i'll go to my person list page here i'll click edit in the edit i'll say go to person edit page parent component collection and id okay because we are passing the id in the url so that the edit page knows that i need to call zeno and fetch the data of which particular person okay let's open preview 
So here is the data which is coming from Xeno. So let me click on edit. So once I click edit, it will take me to the edit page. And here you are seeing in the URL it's seven. So that means it will make a call to Xeno, fetch the data of person seven and show the form prefilled. So it has fetched the data of person and show, shown the form prefilled. Let's try something else. So let's say this user 222 edit. Same thing, person two. Okay, and it is making a fresh call to Xeno. So now for this person two, it has, you can see it is showing the form free will and this data is coming from Xeno since we have binded that particular event to the page, right? So we are saying as soon as this page loads, make a fresh call, bring the record of that particular person, which is person two and show the form pre -filled. So if you go to trap code collection, we still, there is no data stored. So that means everything is coming in the real time just to check whether it's coming in real time or not. So let's go and update something for this person in Xeno. So I'll go to Xeno, update to, let's say 222444. That's all, nothing, I've just updated it. So now let's reload this page. This should have 444 also, okay? So just see. So you see, it is actually bringing the very latest record. So we don't have to do anything. Whatever the data is available in Xeno, it is bringing everything in the real time. Now let's say I want to update this. So we'll have to implement the update flow. So as I mentioned, you need to create an event. In that event, we'll say send the data to Xeno. That's all, right? So to send the data to Xeno, we'll need to create an external API. So let's go and create an external API. So I'll go to my external API and I'll create external API. So I'll say update person data on Xeno. So let's see what API is needed to call. So I'll go to the documentation and we'll need to call this person update API. So I'll copy the endpoint. I'll go here, this here. Now it is asking the person details. So again, I'll wrap it in double cur curly braces. Okay, I'll choose this as a non persistent collection because the data is coming from the collection or the data which is stored in memory. Okay, so I'll say person ID, which is coming in the form of ID. We have mapped all these fields when we are fetching the data. So they are still available to person uh, collection. And from here, we'll just pass it to the Xeno again, right? So if we go to Swagger, so this is what the Xeno is expecting, person ID in the URL and all these parameters. So I'll say full name in full name, which is full name which is coming from our form in the field full name. Fine. Date of birth, date of birth, which is coming from date of birth in the form, collection form. Gender, which is coming in gender. Okay, and then email address is email. So all these things are coming from the added form which we have created. And we are saying that send all this information to Xeno using all this configuration. If your uh, API is authenticated or it's, uh, so you just need to pass the authorization and be token in the header, which we have covered in other videos. So that's all. We don't want to process a response because we are not persisting anything. So we don't want to do anything. We'll say that's all. Just make a call, send the data. Whether it's success or failure, that will be handled on the basis of success or failure response. And let's go and create an event. So in the event, what I'll say, let's say, update person on Xeno, create. Now, I'll say navigate, sorry, first I'll say send data to external API. I'll say whatever data is coming from the form, send to Xeno, which is update person on Xeno, which is fine. And these are all optional. You can store it in session, it's needed for the places. And I'll say once it is sent to Xeno, go to the list page so that we can see the updated record or the updated data on the list page, person list page. And that's all. Now we need to pass all these values from the edit page to the Xeno. Okay. So let's go here. So here if you see ID, uh, full name, email, date of birth and gender are passing. but it needs ID also, right? And we are not passing ID anyway. So good way is to basically pass it as a hidden parameter. So let's do it. 
so here is the form i'll go to the components and i'll just drop a input field okay so input field will say it is id okay the value we are saying get value from person which is the person object which is uh, coming to us and in the person the name is coming with the name id right so we'll see what that value is coming okay so let's reload this page we'll later hide it but we just want to make sure that we send the right data to zeno so this is the person 2 this is the id of person 2 okay let's go and bind the event which we have created so the event is okay so let's reload the page because we have created the event in another tab so it is not reflecting here okay so it is here i'll go to the settings and bind the event so we have created this event update person on zeno and that's all let's go here reload the page now when we submit the form it will take all the parameters send it to the external api and that external api will send it to zeno and after that we will be redirected to the list page so let's update something let's update the email to two 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 and let's after four let's add six 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 and then that's all okay so before making a call to external api let's fix one thing so here while updating uh, the zeno so we have given the person id right person underscore id so let's change this to id and here also let's change this to id why we are doing it because zeno is expecting the id with the name of id okay so just pass it here so that when we make a call to update it it will receive it with the name of id right so that is something which uh, we have to do so id full name email date of birth because this is for the structure of uh, record is so previously we were passing it with person underscore id to fetch the data that is fine but while updating the record it should go with the name of id and on the person page we have just mapped this id that uh, get the name with id okay and then just save it so basically what it will do when you go and click uh, so let's say update this user user 2 it will open the edit page it will show the data prefilled which is it is fetching from the person details api and after that we will submit the data with the parameters of id for full name email and all other fields which we have for person okay so let's go and update this to 226666 user 2222 let's say and that's all so i'll submit it so it will send the parameters to zeno update the record in zeno and redirect us back to the the list page with the updated record because at the list page also it is fetching the new data so if i go to zeno and reload the list so this should have updated okay so let's just reload you see it is 6666 and user is also updated right and if we go to the list page on draft code it will show us the updated record which is fetching zeno in the real time list page is here i'll just reload so the list page is here and it is showing the updated record so now we have implemented the update flow or the edit flow where we are showing the data on a details page which, or on our edit page uh, showing the data prefilled person is updating it we are sending the data to zeno it is getting updated in zeno and on the list page we are retrieving the data back so that we have the latest data in our database so either you update from here or you update from zeno all the time you have the latest data which is the data in the real time so now in the next video we will understand how to delete the data Hope this is clear now. See you again in the next video. Bye-bye.